This is for all the children out there on the wide web who want to learn about the Law of Signs, 11.1, day number one. Blake says, yes, I know what the Law of Signs is. Blake, from memory, don't look at anything. Yes, you did. Who said yes? Okay, so tell me the Law of Signs. Right next to my face, where? Oh, shoot, it's up there. Oh, that was anticlimactic. Uh, the sine of angle A over side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B, which is equal to the sine of angle C over sine C, or over the side C. Notice all of these, what, what's true about all three of these? They're lowercase. What does a lowercase letter stand for? The length of a side. Yeah, so these are all sides. And uh, these capital letters, A, B, and C, those are all angles. Now, you guys, um, orienting yourself to a triangle with A, B, and C. First of all, um, you guys know Greek letters? Some of them. What's A in Greek? Alpha. Okay, so what you're going to see this show up quite a bit. That's not a fish. That's alpha. That's an angle. Okay? Um, and then you're going to see, uh, I think I put it here, yeah, beta. That's like angle B. And then you're going to see, instead of angle C, you're going to see gamma. Ooh, that's kind of fun to draw. That's like you're tying your shoes or something. <laughs> what? Alpha is a fishy. Let's do it again. Right. Beta is a B with like this tail on it. It's like Mario Mario 3 when he gets the raccoon tail. Right? Nobody? Okay, thank you. And gamma, this is like, uh, I don't know. I don't know, it's like an octopus that lost six of its legs and it's upside down or something. It's a, yeah, it's an alpha fish swimming down toward the bottom of the lake. Okay. Now, the sides, right, the sides are always across from the angle given. So let's call this angle A. What would this side over here be? Side A, yeah. If this was angle B over here, right, here's angle B. Uh, that's Greek for B. Uh, this would be side B. And C, angle C, this would be side C. So the side is always across from the angle, okay? Okay, so I'm going to prove to you the law of signs using this slide. Hello. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to um, highlight a couple things for you. Packer fans are sad. Bears fans are kind of happy. Vikings fans are really sad. Okay, uh, how would I find the area of that triangle? Math, yes. One half base times height, cool. Okay, so let's talk about that. This green length here should be height, if I'm not mistaken. So wouldn't the area be one half base, what would the base be in this case? C times height, H. Well, I can come up with um, a different representation for H using SOHCAHTOA. All right, so bear with me for a second. If I took the sine of angle A, what would that equal? Opposite, which would be H, over hypotenuse, which would be B. Notice this is a right triangle right here. Okay, okay what would be true about the sine of B? That would be H over what? A. Cool. So what would H equal? Well, H is going to equal a couple of things here. First, here it would be H would equal B sine of A. What would it equal below? A sine of B. Okay, okay, I see something happening here. I see what's happening here. No, nobody. Okay, that's cool. The Rock, yeah, okay. You're welcome. No, no. okay. Uh, okay, so let's do let's do a quick input. Let's do a quick input here. Uh, I'm gonna use a color that that isn't already up here. Let's use a gross one like orange. 
I like the bears, but yeah, I do. I do. Let's let's do a quick substitution of both of these things. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this in. Okay, so what would that be? Well, area would equal uh, one half c times that thing. All right, a sine of b. Okay, would you also agree that if I pick a different gross color, Joey, pick a gross color. Gray is gross to you. How about this, like, how about this, like, baby diaper green? Okay. Aki poops. Oh, that's nasty. That's nasty. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in there. And, and what would I get? Well, technically, it should still be one half base times height. And height in this case equals B sine of A. And go figure, look, I have I have A and C, I have B and C, what don't I have? I have A and C, I have B and C, I don't have A and C. No, I don't have A and B. A and B. Now, what angle would go in there then, do you think? C, okay. Now check this out, this is a cool proof. Uh, the area of any triangle, which I don't really care about now, what I do know is that these three are equivalent to each other. Um, what do each of them have in common? The one half. Okay, get rid of the one half, Mr. Ludd. Okay, cool. Um, watch what I'm going to do. And it's, it's pretty cool. And whoever the old person was that thought of this is a genius. They divided everything by ABC. They thought, why not? I'm going to do that. And what did they get? Oh, A cancels with A, C cancels with C. Sine of B over B. Huh? B cancels with B, C cancels with C, sine of A over A. Huh? And A cancels with A, B cancels with B, sine of C over C. Oh my gosh, if I just rearrange these, I get the law of sines. You're probably like the whole time, like, what's he even doing? Why is he doing all this stuff? This is weird. Well, yeah, most of the time I am weird, but I had a point to it. Here's the law of science. Weird with a purpose. Weird with a purpose. I like that motto. Weird with a purpose. Now, what does this allow you to do that Sokotoa didn't? Math on what kind of triangles? Non-ray triangles. Now, not all of them. Here's why. Maybe you'll notice this. Maybe you won't. Let's go uh, with the first one. Yeah, let's do this. No, maybe not. Whatever. This is only helpful because it ends up being a problem where we cross multiply. It's only helpful if, if we have a side angle pair. What does a side angle pair mean? Well, if I'm given... Let's see here. Come on now. If I'm given this angle measure, this side, and this side, what would be a logical next step to find the other missing sides or angles? Well, let's, let's write it out. I know angle A. Let's say angle A is 42 degrees. Let's say side A is, I don't know, uh, 21 centimeters. Let's say side B is... 23 centimeters. Is there a way that I could target and solve for solve for angle B? Yeah, it's using law of sines. Sine of A over A equals sine of B. I don't know B over B. Okay, and what are angle A and side B? Oh, well, I know them. But if I don't know them in some certain scenario, I'm going to have issues. 42 and 23. Check that out. I, I only have one variable. I can solve for that. But if I don't have a side angle pair, example, I don't know A. But I do know C. Hmm. Will that help? Well, I'd have the sine of 42 over A equals the sine of B, don't know it, over 23 equals the sine of C 
over 21. No matter what way I cross multiply here, I'm going to have two variables involved in each case. Are you with me? So let's take a look at an example. Here, do I have a side angle pair? Yeah, I have side, I have angle C. This has to be angle C because if this is side A, then this is angle A. If this is side B, then this is angle B. So I know side C equals 5.5. Let's set up a proportion. I don't need to use all three. I'm going to write them down even though I don't need them all so that you can see that they're disposable at any given point. Okay. Do I know angle A? No. I don't know the measure of angle A. It's over here, right? I don't know it. I can find it. Sure, I can find it. How would I find it? 180 minus 130. Okay, so, so let me rewrite. B's measure is 20. Do I know side B? No, I don't. I know angle C is 110. Do I know side C? Yes, I do. Do I know angle A? We just said 180 minus 110 minus 20, so that would be 50. Do I know side A? No, I don't. Do I have enough information to find B and C? Yeah, absolutely. I can do this. I'm going to cross multiply that. If you would, with a neighbor, find B and then also find A. Please round to the nearest tenth, let's say. All right, so I set up my proportion and cross multiplied. If somebody, when they get an answer, it's two. Like straight even two, no decimal? Zero, zero, one. Okay, 2.001, we'll go with two. Okay, somebody else help me with the setup for... Yeah, I don't I don't like that either. It's the worst when you got your protein powder in the bottom of your bag and you're really just you're just so famished. Uh what would I take here? What's what's my cross multiplication? Five point five times? Sine of fifty. And be a smart child and just make your life easier. How, how would I find A? I'd divide that by sine of ten or one ten. One ten. Okay. Someone with a calculadora? Four point five, thank you. Hey, we solved that triangle. We'd be done. We'd be done. Okay, let's look at another example here. Um, oh my gosh, I don't have a side angle pair. I'm so scared. Yes, you do, Joey says. Yes, you do. What is your, well, let's put them in blanks here. Sine of blank over blank equals sine of blank over blank. Sounds like I'm, no, I wouldn't do that. Okay, uh, let's start with, 200. Let's plug 200 in here. We don't know the angle yet. We do? Well, this is going to be, this angle right here going to be 180 minus these two angles right here. So I add them angles together. What do I get? I get them 105. And I subtracted that gave me 75. So that angle is 75. So then my other two angles, they'd be 65. And some kid going to do this. They're going to do this. They do it all the time in geometry. They go like this, and they go like that, and say, what are you doing? Why would you do that, kid? I don't know. I don't know how I did that. What did I do? I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Not that. I like that. Find A and B, would you? Find, find A and B. Oh. Okay. False. Okay, so Joey did this. And Joey, Joey got himself a little 200 times that sine dim 65. He is in degree mode. Over that side dim 75. And that's B. And Joey said B is 180.6. Let's go 7. Uh, I don't like that. That's, that's, it's not 7. It's 6, 6. I'm just going there. Okay, somebody get A? What do you got for A? 133.09. I'm going to go 133.1. Okay, because um, I wanted to, Joey. Gosh. And then there we are. We're on the homework. Uh, okay, uh, the one thing I'm going to tell you to be aware of is that our triangles aren't always perfectly sketched.
right? So if one angle looks bigger than another, just go with the numbers, okay? Um, when it says alpha, alpha is A, beta is B, gamma is C, okay? Um, so in solving a triangle, we just want to take the knowns, 13 and 17, and we want to find the unknowns, which in this case would be C, gamma, and side B. That's it for today. Hope you learned something about law of signs. My favorite part was the proof. I should have worn my glasses, but that'll have to wait for another day. Law of cosines coming up. BCGs. Hey, like, subscribe, comment below. 100th sub uh, gets a $5 gift card to GNC.